October the 5th as Dr. Jerry Graham and Bulldog Don Kent face off against the Spirit of America, Chris Carter, and Calypso Jim. But that's not all. In the main event, or one of the main events, you are going to see a return match for the World Heavyweight Wrestling Championship, the Great Wojo against Scott Recksteiner, and certainly a great impression you've made on all these fans. Scott, I know you graduated from the U of M, University of Michigan, Big Ten wrestling champion up there, but you're facing Wojo right here in his hometown. What about the old hometown advantage? Welcome, fans, once again to another edition of Shooting It Straight with your old friend, Rudy. And our guest this week is one of the greats when it comes to wrestling announcers. You think of guys like Gordon Soley, you think of guys like Jim Ross. You think of guys like the one and only Chuck Allen. Well, here's a man sitting next to me who I am not only thankful that he's a friend of mine, but he's also a colleague of mine now. Of course, I'm talking about the IBW Hall of Famer and a man who's seen it all in this business for sure. The one and only Mr. Terry Sullivan. Terry, how are you? I am great. Thank you very much for having me. For those of you who've been living under a rock for the last, I don't know, 40 or 50 years, and you happen to be a wrestling fan, Terry Sullivan, tell them, how did you get involved in this? What, 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 what made you get that passion for wrestling? Oh, man, I was a fan from the time I was six years old. The very first time I turned on wrestling, it was when it was on CKLW Channel 9 from Windsor on Thursday nights and the and they repeat it on Saturday afternoons. First time I turned on the show, it was Brew Bernard and Skull Murphy in a tag team match. And I'm like, wow, I mean, <laughs> these were two of the all time greats. Yes. And just a, a vicious tag team. And I'm like, oh, how is this legal? What is going <laughs> on here? But I was hooked. Yeah. And uh, uh, parents didn't care too much for it, but I loved it. And, and there wasn't a whole lot happening at, at that particular time. Now we're talking back in the late 50s. Okay. And uh, through the 60s then Toledo started up again and started on TV. And I finally talked and cajoled my way to one of the matches at the Toledo Sports Arena. And then I was beyond hooked. I was utterly captivated. Also had an interest in broadcasting and thought, wow, I wish I could be a wrestling broadcaster. And Bob Finnegan came around, uh, a guy with a radio background who befriended me or me him. And uh, thought, wow, I, you know, I just aspired to be Bob Finnegan. And uh, long story short, I became friendly with the promoter there, Martino Angelo, who uh, introduced me to Les Ruffin in Cincinnati, who sort of put a good word in with the office and I started ring announcing when I was in college in 1970 in Dayton, Ohio at this little union hall. Okay. And it all went from there. Be within six months I was doing TV at Kobo. Nice. Yeah. So um, uh, you're from Toledo? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, born and raised in Toledo. Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, some of the, the you, you it, it, I mean, everyone knows when you think of big time wrestling, and we're talking about, uh, you know, Mr. Farhead's uh, business uh, from the 60s and 70s and even a little bit in the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how did you befriend Sheik? He wasn't a guy who was approachable, but Not at I, all. Was told, <laughs> I was told that you were one of his favorites, you know, and, and that came from him telling me that yeah he was a he was a an incredible person i was always in awe of him whenever i was around him it was almost like a dreamlike state am i really with this guy because he was always from day one bigger than life he was always that you know madman from syria that he that he was in the ring and uh, I'd be walking down the street with him or sitting in a restaurant with him and, uh, you know, people staring at us. And I'm thinking, I can't believe that I'm here. But, um, in, in, you know, I mentioned Les Ruffin earlier. He mm -hmm. got me started in Dayton. He was promoting Dayton, then got me a license in Cincinnati. They had a commission there. Mm -hmm. And uh, gradually, the, Les put in a good word for me with the Sheik. And uh, um, one time he came to Dayton. Uh, in, and saw me in action, and um, I guess he must have been impressed because uh, he started using me, started using me on television. Then shortly after that, and started talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was funny. We were just talking, and uh, 
to have a conversation with the man mm. put me in awe. I was like, whoa, he, yeah. he really talks? Yeah. My gosh, he yeah. Really, you know? And, but I'll tell you this, once you became friends with him and you can attest to this. Oh, your family. Your family. Yeah. Your family. You Absolutely. Know, I remember um, Joyce, Miss Farhead, um, making hummus and everything yeah. up at the Kibbe. house. And, oh, sure. Goodness, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, fast forwarding uh, to your time at Bruce of Bedlam. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Um, I'm, I'm sure you were friends with uh, Jerry Jaffe. Uh, 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 Dr. Dr. Jerry, Jerry Graham, Graham Jr. Jr. Yes, yeah, yes. he's from Toledo. Yes. In fact, he and I started around the same time through Martino Angelo, the promoter in Toledo. Martino Angelo trained Jerry to wrestle, and uh, so they were tight. And uh, I knew Jerry, I was already working when Jerry broke in mm. as a referee mm -hmm. in Toledo and, and the area. So we maintained a relationship through the years, and, and I, after big time full that I, I was not interested really in doing anything anymore. Mm -hmm. And I see it's like after you've been to the top, you, sure, know, you sure. can't you can't recreate that. Sure. But then Jerry called me one day and told me about the plans for Bruiser Bedlam and past TV here yeah, in Detroit yeah. and the, the premier center. Yeah. And at that time he was uh, running locally and doing real well, had a lot of the top some of the top guys from from my day sure. in big time wrestling, along with the, some of the newer people. And I said, yeah, you know, I, I sort of like the product. I'll give that a shot. And it turned out to be a great decision. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this, uh, being involved in the wrestling business as long as you have, like I said, I'm, I'm sure you've seen everything, ups and downs and inside and outs. Um, uh, you, um, when you walked away from wrestling after Sheik folded, is it true that you became a radio DJ? Oh, yeah. For rock uh, yeah, radio? Yeah, I did, yeah. I, uh, when I went to college, I went for uh, communication, radio broadcasting, and uh, got a job in Toledo in a rock and roll radio station. We were lucky enough, uh, we were a whole new staff of people pretty much, uh, at FM 104, WIOT in Toledo, and took it to number one. In fact, uh, within six months, we were the number one station in Toledo, and a rating which is never to this day been equal. I'm talking back in 77, sure, 78. Sure. And yeah, so I was uh, an on air personality there, became a program director, yes. did a little bit of everything. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was a great, great ride. Is, is, is it true that you're still involved in communications teaching? Uh, I was. Okay. I uh, yes. sort of evolved from radio to teaching radio at the University of Toledo. Uh, they had a student radio station there and they wanted somebody to come in and sort of uh, add a little structure and back you know a background to it sure. professional background and uh, somebody to teach some classes as well so i went in there and, and did that i taught for 24 years and worked at uh, the university for 33 years wow. i'm an old guy <laughs> Jeez, you're, old as dirt. You're a veteran. That's for sure. Yeah, you're right. Grizzled okay. old veteran. The, the jack of all trades, <laughs> if, you, if you will. Yeah. I, I don't know if we've mastered any of them. But. No, we <laughs> keep trying. That's, that's that's all we can do. Now, you're part of international big time wrestling. Yeah. Let's talk about that. How? What do you you know? And and you know, I always tell you this. Um, me being the promoter, it, it is an honor to have you here. Like it really solidifies that. One, you take the product serious. And uh, because if you didn't, look, let's keep it real here. You wouldn't be wasting your time here if no. you didn't believe in what's going on here. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I mean, not blowing smoke at all, but I, I watched your product when, when I came up with Jerry Graham a few years ago for the Hall of Fame. And I said, yeah, I, this is my type of wrestling. There's a lot of different styles out there. There's, there's no doubt about that. Some of it's pretty cartoonish. Some of it is beyond ultra violent. And, and uh, some of it is it's a bunch of backyard type untrained people. And that's not the kind of stuff that I, I choose to be involved in. Hey, I respect the people who do it. But that's not what I want to be involved in. I like wrestling the way it was on TBS, WTBS, yes, 605 Saturday yes, Nights. Sir, yes, sir. And uh, the days of big time wrestling in Bruiser Bedlam. Good quality wrestling, trained performers. And yeah, I, I find it really exciting to this day. Yeah. Well, we're happy to have you. Well, now we're at the point of the uh, program 
where we like to pick our guest brain. Uh oh. And uh, what we do is we do a little segment here, and it is what comes to your mind when we say these names? Oh, yeah. We're going to have five names I'm going to give you. Okay. And one word, in one word, and we didn't practice this all day, <laughs> by the way. And we're shooting it straight. So uh -oh. we're, we're shooting here. Shooting. Okay. Watch out. Are you we're ready? Shooting. Yeah. The first name. Supermouth Dave Grayson. Oh, friend, friend. Luis Martinez. Smooth. Captain Ed George. An enigma. <laughs> Sabu. Mmm. Wow. Ah. <laughs> uh. Jeez, you stumped me. <laughs> um, hardcore. Mohammed Jihad Saad. Mm. Underrated. Rudy Hill. Veteran. Well, there you have it. The one and only Mr. Terry Sullivan, a part of Shooting It Straight with Rudy. We'll be back next time, but until then, make sure you continue to watch The Fix on Fight TV, The Fix on RocksTV.com, and The Fix over at Amazon Prime. Once again, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, man. enjoyed this video from rockstv.com make sure you follow rocks tv on facebook and youtube if it's underground we're there